welcome to another video on control charts so in our series of control chart videos we have seen the introduction to control charts and we have also seen the control charts for variable data like individual moving range chart x bar r chart which is sample average and sample range chart x bar s chart which is sample average and sample standard deviation chart now we are entering into a slightly tricky subject in control charts which is attribute charts so as part of attribute charts in this video we are going to understand about p chart which is called proportion chart let's get into the video as i was explaining in this video we are going to understand about the first attribute chart which is p chart p stands for proportion chart so what do we mean by proportion first let's get an understanding of that if i inspect 100 mission to components and out of those 100 mission to components i found three components to be defective the word is very important three components to be defective that means the entire unit cannot be taken to the next level the unit either need to go through rework or it need to be scrapped so if you pick up a unit and you can only decide a yes or a no a good or bad that kind of data is what we call it as discrete binary data and a discrete binary data follows binomial distribution so proportion is nothing but out of the sample units that i inspected how many are found to be defective or what is the proportion of defective units how do we calculate it three defective units found on 100 units sampled so 3 divided by 100 will give you the proportion of defective units so this is what we mean by proportion so in this case we are going to draw a chart for data which is represented in terms of proportion so we are going to see p chart let's get into the example so here the first example that we are going to see is a bulb manufacturing company led bulbs they make and every day they decide to inspect only 500 bulbs irrespective of their production volume their sample size is 500 and every day is my subgroup so what we understand here is my subgroup count is fixed the number of samples in my subgroup is fixed so p chart can be drawn for both fixed subgroups as well as varying subgroup but let's start our example by looking at a fixed subgroup p chart so here as i was explaining the number of samples inspected in the bulb manufacturing company is 500 every day and out of those 500 bulbs that get manufactured they decide to inspect it on a test bench and if the bulb is glowing they call it a good one if it is not glowing they call it a bad one so the bad one is called a defectives and in the column b we have collected the number of defectives for each subgroup and my subgroup size is 500 and the subgroup size 500 is same it is not varying so it is a fixed subgroup condition now the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the proportion and how do we do that as i was explaining number of defectives divided by the total numbers inspected and if i copy and paste this formula i will get the defectives individually for subgroup okay now i need to calculate the p bar p bar stands for proportion bar as we know bar is nothing but average so we need to calculate the average for the individual proportions that we have calculated and the formula is very simple sum of all the proportions just a minute sum of all proportions divided by count of data points for which we are calculating this average so now it gives us the proportion bar that is p bar so now this is going to be a straight line in this case this is going to be our center line so i am going to refer the center line for all the cells in my table okay now we need to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit so if you see here i have copy pasted the formula from the standard table so there are two conditions given here if the sample size is constant if the uh, sample size not necessarily constant so 
if the sample size is constant what we are going to do is we are going to use this particular formula and this formula is going to operate like this how it's going to operate let's understand this slowly slightly tricky to enter it in excel as a formula it's very simple to understand which is nothing but p bar which is proportion bar plus 3 times of square root of p bar multiplied by 1 minus p bar divided by square root of sample so it's, it's a straightforward sam formula however to enter it in excel we need to do it a little bit slowly otherwise we may get into uh, making mistakes so the first thing that i'm going to do is is equal to p bar so this is my p bar so let me refer this slide then i say plus three times so three multiplication then i open my square root formula and if you see the numerator denominator both carry square root so i can just apply a single square root so square root and as i open my square root formula the first thing that i'm going to again do is p bar multiplied by open brackets 1 minus again p bar close brackets so what we have done now is we have covered the numerator part so the numerator part is covered Denom now we, have, we will cover the denominator part and here the denominator is nothing but the number of samples so i am taking this particular value now let me close the square root formula now if i hit enter i get my upper control limit so what i can do is this upper control limit because this is going to be a if you see the values that i have taken here almost all these values are standard values it's not going to change throughout this table so what i can do is i can just copy paste this okay i can just copy paste this particular formula i will get the same value here now what we will do we will come to the lower control limit so for lower control limit exactly the same formula only thing is instead of plus three times you are going to use minus three times so i am going to remove this plus sign and i am going to add a minus sign to it and i am going to hit enter and now you will see this is a challenge that we have seen in all our control chart videos your lower control limit sometimes can go below zero okay sometimes if you apply the formula can go below zero so naturally you cannot have a negative proportion of defectives you can have zero proportion but you cannot have a negative proportion so what we need to do is we need to make a small alteration only to the lower control limit where we are going to add one more excel function to it which is maximum of zero or your formula so if the value is less than zero if it is negative this function will ensure that lower control limit will become zero if the function if the lower control limit formula gives you a value which is in positive value then this uh, can give you the exact same value so now this is going to be zero so i copy paste this so friends let me repeat so we had number of units inspected number of defectives identified then we had individual proportion then we had the average of proportion the average of proportion is our center line the upper control limit is average of proportion plus three times of square root of p bar multiplied by one minus p bar divided by square root of n that's the formula and that formula gives us the upper control limit and same formula will give us the lower control limit but the lower control limit cannot go below zero so we use a function to make sure if it is negative we will get zero as a value so now we have our individual value center line upper control limit and lower control limit the formula is given here so i'm going to select this i'm going to insert and i'm going to draw a chart and if you see i got my p chart and if you see this p chart this p chart is drawn for fixed subgroup that means the subgroup is not changing every time or the number of data points in subgroup is not changing every time now we will see a completely different scenario where the team has decided to pick up 10 percentage of total calls received 10 percentage of total calls received in my telephone exchange the automated telephone exchange and out of those 10 calls how many were not able to get connected or unanswered 
if your exchange is occupied with the overall load then if you try to call that call will not go through it will say lines are busy so that is a defective as far as a telephone exchange is concerned that is a defective so how many defectives we have we have 25 27 each day the defectives counts are different and each day your number of uh, subgroup size is also different it's not 250 every time it is changing so again the formula is pretty much the same the only difference is last time we divided the denominator with a fixed subgroup of 500 for all our cells this time that alone is going to change so again let's repeat the method it's very simple is equal to defectives divided by your subgroup size individual defectives are identified now we need to calculate average so sum of individual proportions divided by count of individual proportions and that will give you p bar which is average of proportions sorry this time average of proportion is going to be our center line so i need to refer this value for all these cells in the table now when we come to upper control limit it's the same formula so i'm going to copy paste from here and then make the adjustments so the formula goes like this k3 is my p bar k3 plus three times of square root of sorry k2 plus 3 times of square root of k2 multiplied by 1 minus k2 divided by h2 this time this h2 is the number of data points in your subgroup right your subgroup size and that subgroup size is not same and it is a varying subgroup it is changing so what we are going to do is we are going to copy paste this formula and as you see here the upper control limit is not going to be a straight line instead your upper control limit will be a line which will be fluctuating the line which will be changing and why it is changing it is changing because the denominator the formula is number of data points in your subgroup and that number of data points in subgroup this time is not a fixed value it is a varying value same is the case with lower control limit so for lower control limit also we are going to use the same condition and we are going to copy paste the formula till the end So as you see here, for the first time in our control charts video, we are seeing upper and lower control limits not being a straight line. Instead, it is a varying line. So let me select these values, insert graph. And as you see here, the control limits are not a straight line. The lines are fluctuating. So let me keep it close to each other so that it gives a understand it right so friends as i was explaining this is a proportion chart and what do we mean by proportion we are plotting proportion on a subgroup interval right so sub proportion is nothing but number of defectives identified against the total number of samples inspected or in other words your subgroup size and this subgroup size can be fixed can be varying for both of that i have given the formula and i have also seen shown you how to do the calculation now what we will do is we will take both these examples to our mini tab and we will uh, draw these charts in mini tab so let me delete the other charts which i already have let me delete them and we will start fresh So let me copy both the data here so one is my bulb defects in a bulb manufacturing company another one is unanswered call in a automated telephone exchange so we can call it as calls checked and this is unanswered call so if I click on stats, basic stats, sorry stats, control charts, 
control charts for attribute and in attribute i'm going to select proportion chart which is a p chart so i select this i select defective bulbs and here my subgroup is a fixed subgroup so i'm going to select number of bulbs and similar to your previous videos where you have seen your x bar chart or uh, imr chart here also we can go for tests and here you will see the test that you can check for a binomial distribution in a x bar r chart or x bar s chart or for that matter imr chart you had lot of test because those tests are applicable for a data which is normally distributed but here we are now checking this for data which is binomial distribution so for binomial distribution what are all the test which is applicable that will be listed here i can tick i can put a tick mark on all these things as you see here a data point outside control limit uh, nine data points on the same side of the central line six data points all increasing or decreasing and 14 data points alternating up and down so these are all statistical abnormalities for a binomial distribution so i select this click on okay and then i click on okay i get the control chart which you saw in your let me copy this first which we created in our excel file so let me copy this graph take it to excel paste it here how do we interpret this chart that's very important so if you see here as i told if you have a data point outside your control limits that is definitely a cause of concern where we need to do investigation but if you see this particular data point here it is not going beyond the control limit still it is failing test number 3 and what is test number 3 test number 3 is continuously data point in increasing or decreasing direction more than 6 data point that's also abnormality and this particular abnormality falls in that category that's why minita was highlighted that in a a uh, red color tick box or red color flag so we can investigate and see what is happening here why there is a continuous reducing trend so this is how we can draw for a fixed subgroup now if i press control e this time i select unanswered call as my defectives and i select calls checked as my subgroup size so my p chart test options can still be checked they are checked so i click okay now i again click okay i get the chart for varying subgroup and you can very clearly see that your control limits your upper and lower control limits are fluctuating your upper and lower control limits are fluctuating as it is fluctuating you understand that the subgroup is varying so this is one of the things that you need to make note of among very few control charts where the control limits will be fluctuating p chart for varying subgroup is one of the charts where the control limits will fluctuate depending upon the number of samples you pick on each subgroup because the denominator of the upper and lower control limit formulas are directly coming from number of samples you pick on each subgroup when that number changes definitely your control limits will fluctuate so let me copy this chart take it to your excel so friends let me quickly summarize this uh, p chart for you as i was explaining p chart is a proportion chart drawn to understand the proportion of a particular process where the data is collected in the form of discrete binary data yes no pass fail good bad in that what is the proportion of bad items what is the proportion of defective items that information is getting tracked on a control chart in terms of proportion and for this we have two scenarios where your subgroup can have a fixed number or your subgroup can have a varying number for both fixed and varying numbers i have given the individual formulas to calculate the central line to calculate the upper control limit and to calculate the lower control limit and as i was explaining before one of the very few charts where your control limits can fluctuate not a straight line but can fluctuate is p chart and why it is happening it can happen on a p chart where you are plotting proportion where your subgroup count is not constant it is varying and that proportion count directly involved in your denominator formula of this particular upper and lower control limit and that is why your upper and lower control limits are fluctuating for p chart when you are plotting proportion for varying subgroup i hope this video was useful for you to understand how to plot 
proportions in a control chart and what is the excel formula and how to make inference out of the uh, chart and how to do the same thing in mini tab and how to make inference out of mini tab red flags hope this video was useful thanks for your time thanks for watching for more videos on control charts mini tab tutorials or quality management tools please subscribe our channel thank you